Welcome back to Acer P Bonsai. A few weeks ago we were working on one of my first Momiji. It's where I did the major carving work and then I ended up doing an air layer on the upper part of the tree. This tree here I purchased at the same time as that first Momiji. I bought it in a 10 gallon nursery can and it had three Momiji standard green Japanese maples growing out of it for a low price. I think I only paid about $80. For it. As you can see we've got a really long sinuous trunk with some interesting movement. You also see a little daughter or son tree down here at the base. This is actually an air layer that I took a few years ago off of the apex of the tree. It just didn't quite fit with the design and I wanted to grab that same foliage characteristic to create a smaller second trunk. So this is a really unique tree. It's kind of in that literati style, that longer reaching style. I did a little bit of wire work on this earlier in the year which I've now removed and you can see I've gotten some of these fine branches to curve downward and create a nice analogous movement around the tree. There's actually this one branch back here that's still wired up. It needed a little bit more convincing to get that downward slope to the branch. Even though this tree is fairly sparse, it is that literati style, and this is one of the few trees that I have in what I would consider the refinement stage. So today we're gonna do a quick defoliation on the tree to increase the ramification as well as slow down the growth of the tree. As far as the pot, this is uh, one of my favorite ways to make training pots. I've got this tree in a water trough that comes with those ceramic pots in your big box store in the outdoor section. I used a diamond drill bit to cut through the pot and create some nice drainage holes. It's a nice low round container. It cost me about $10 plus my effort of drilling the holes. It makes a pretty great training pot with a little bit of glaze on it. In a future video maybe I'll show the technique of, of drilling out these these training containers. So without further ado let's get into this and go ahead and do fully at the tree. All right, folks, so here we have the two leaves. This little guy is off of our newly defoliated literati, and this leaf here, with very similar genetics, came off of the sister tree that we just air layered a few weeks ago. Look at the incredible difference in leaf size. That's one of the reasons Japanese maples make such a wonderful specimen for bonsai. Leaf reduction is extremely easy, and this is just the beginning of how far I think we can push the reduction of leaf size. All right, folks, here we are with our root over amethyst tree bonsai. We want to continue increasing the ramification on this young tree, so we are gonna defoliate this as well. This tree is much younger than even that uh, Yama Momiji we just got finished with, but we are gonna do this defoliation process because this specific seedling tends to have very vigorous shoots. If we look over here, you can see that there's a shoot right here, and goodness, this thing is probably over two, almost three inches long. When we allow these to elongate excessively, they can tend to stretch out. It has some of those blood good traits, so it does tend to have large leaves and elongated shoots. We're gonna be continually battling that, and some would say that might be bad for bonsai, but similarly to when we use the normal green Yama Momiji, that high amount of vigor can also be seen as a positive characteristic because it means that the tree can stand a lot more abuse, a lot more manipulation, and it will spring back after any operation that we do. You can see I've got a couple of pieces of wire I've shaped these branches as they've extended in the spring. About a month ago, I had a mishap. One of my trees fell over in a really strong wind and it landed right on top of this trunk. As you can see, it's a little bit wobbly here. I was definitely worried about it the first few days and it seemed a little bit loose up top. So at the end of May, beginning of June, it started to push new growth. And I said, okay, I don't need to worry about this tree. Whatever happened to it is minor and we can continue working on this tree. I am going to keep one shoot of this and I'm gonna throw it into my aeroponic propagator. It's kind of an interesting tree. It is, you know, one of your typical blood good traits, but it tended to have a really nice purple color last year. I'm gonna continue watching it and I'm gonna to try to just take one clone of this tree. Because this is that elongated shoot, it's never gonna be useful to the design. So I'm gonna cut right below that. And this is gonna be the shoot that I try to propagate. I'm gonna push this shoot all the way back and we're gonna hopefully get some new buds there at the base. I'm not gonna to move to a time lapse because there's so few leaves here to defoliate. I'm just gonna come through here and make those chops. You know what, we've got another really long extension. Maybe I will do a second clone attempt. That's growing really strong. Possibly another clone here. Let's get rid of that new growth off the tip. Over on this backside, I did want to strengthen this upper trunk a little bit but I don't want to go too far. If we allow this to run too strongly, 
it will weaken that lower branch. So you wanna be taking two steps forward, one step back. We don't want any one area of this tree to get too strong. I've got these little blue shears. They're pretty inexpensive. I get them online and they're really great for doing this defoliation work. They're nice and sharp and they're cheap enough that once they dole out, you can replace them. And this is really great. You know, I collected this seedling out in my yard when I lived in New York. This was the spring of 2021. So this tree here, it's only three springs, right? So this tree is just a little bit over three years old. And you can see just from this, how much progress you can really make. You see a lot of stuff online that says, oh, you're not doing real bonsai if you start with seedlings. But you know, if you don't have the money to spend on expensive pre-bonsai material, you can, if you're patient, you can develop a nice bonsai from seedlings. And so I hope that this inspires you to collect some of those seedlings next spring if you didn't already capture some this spring. I think I collected about 150 or 200 seedlings this year, just around a few of the local neighborhoods. All right, so we are fully defoliated. Let me give you a spin around. So as you can see, we have these longer shoots. I've already got what I need for cloning. I'm going to cut these back to one node. This may be a false node here. I think there was a sepal growing from it. This node is way too long to be usable. So I'm still gonna cut that one back. We've got two nodes back here. Let's cut that back to one. Again, we have a really long node here. I would like to wire this into place. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Oh, and there you go, folks, right on camera. I broke that. That's okay. I see a bud at the base of this shoot and I think that will grow. Accidents happen and we need to just keep trudging forward. I see a little bud right here that may push. Again, we have an overly elongated shoot here. We need to cut that back. This one here is also too long. These in the back, those are looking just fine. Cut that back slightly. There we go. Okay, this one is okay. We are gonna push the sinuous trunk line down a little bit further. Over here, we have some interesting branches. These are really strong, very stiff. I'm gonna push this back and we'll see what happens with that. All right, these ones are looking okay. Push that back to one node. This one here is extremely long. We're gonna push that back. Those are all in nice proportion there. What do we have out here? This branch here is coming from the bottom of this branch line, so I'm going to cut that off. We've got a nice branch here. This one is really long. I'm gonna push that back. And we have budding right there. Let's make sure we push that all the way back. Before we move on to our next tree, I'm gonna throw these shoots into our propagation station and I bet you've been waiting to see the results. Uh, we already have some roots popping, so let's go take a look. We're back in the garage at our propagation station. Let's go ahead and open her up. We've lost a couple of leaves. One of these Benici Dory here lost all of its leaves. I don't know if it's gonna make it but most everyone else in the entire tent looks great. There's one Oridono Nishki over here, if you can see here. There was some kind of a bug that got in here and it totally destroyed this one leaf here. There's all kinds of bug poop down there, but I think it must have died. I don't see any other leaf damage. And so I'm just gonna leave that alone. Our three cuttings off of that purple root over amethyst tree. And I'm gonna hit those with a little bit of hormone and just find an open spot to put these in the propagator. I turn the motor off of this propagator so that these new shoots here can sit with that rooting hormone on them for a little bit before we fire it back up. And I know y'all have been waiting for the results. I'm gonna pull one of these Hubble Super Cork out of the back and oh my goodness, folks, can you see that rootage? That is just outstanding there. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten roots coming out of the base there. We gotta be super gentle when we're putting these cuttings back in here. We don't wanna snap off those baby roots. Let's pull this guy up. All right. Hubble Super Cork going crazy over there. This one here is our Benny Maiko. Got a few more cuttings coming out here. These are Oridono Nishiki, one, two, three, four that I see rooted there. This is a Benici Dori already rooting on that one there. There's a tiny root coming off of that one. Moving over here to the center, this is mostly Arakawa in this area with these nice rootage going on. We have a few of our Deshojos as well. Unfortunately, I do not see any rootage yet on our Japanese True Sagan. This was a very weak tree, so of all the ones that I put in here, these are the ones that I least expected to have success with. I'm not gonna give up on them yet. We're gonna keep them running and hopefully we'll get some roots in the near future. 
So moving in close here, as promised, we've got kind of a disgusting algae bloom happening in this back corner, but that vent hole has been absolutely invaluable in keeping the humidity in this tray. So we're really excited about that. All right, folks, so let's pull out one of these Arakawas and see if we can find one with roots on it. Oh yeah, look at that, folks. You see, it didn't grow roots at the node. It grew them right from the end of the stem where we cut it. So this is showing phenomenal rootage there. A few days ago, I went in here and I cut the longer roots back. So some of these were twice as long. I cut them back. And since then, you can see that they've started to ramify really nicely above that cut. That's gonna be a great way to start out that Nabari from the very beginning. So we're gonna let those sit in there a little bit longer. That one we just showed you is probably about the furthest along of any of them. We have about four or five of the Hubble Super Cork over there that are about the same progress. After we've done that cutback and about another week of additional ramification on those roots, we'll pull those out of the propagator and get them planted into a nice soil media in small propagation cans. You can see that we've defoliated the bottom of our tree. I first showed you this tree when I was doing the initial spring pruning on my Twombly's Red Sentinel in one of my earliest episodes. The tree grew really nicely through the spring and I've cut back this first flush of growth. I did pinch this a little bit and a few of them did extend past that initial pruning that I gave it. So I am gonna reduce back some of these overly elongated shoots. The main work we're gonna do right now after that defoliation is we need to deal with this knob here. We have one cut here, it's healing nicely, and we need to reduce this knob. Right now, in the beginning of June, is the perfect time to do these major operations on Yamamomichi. So let's get in there with our knob cutters and make that cut. Get our cutters lined up and boom, there we go. I think we did just about a perfect cut there. There's the wound, you can see it from that top side and it's nearly perfect to the top edge of this elongating new trunk line and on the other side, it hits this other branch. We're gonna clean that up really quickly with a clean razor blade and then we'll cover it over with some cut putty. So we don't wanna separate that cambium from the xylem so we're always sawing with our pressure toward the interior to the center of that trunk. Nice and gently there. No matter how sharp our tools are, we are always gonna cause a little bit of damage when we take a big bite out of a tree so it's important that we clean up those edges and you know just we just want to set them up for the best possible healing outcome all right i think that is looking just about perfect there and let's get some of the cut putty on there here in this early june period is the absolute best time to be doing these major surgeries on our trees so we've got that one all covered over there. That looks great. There's one more shoot that's too long. Let's push that back. Uh, we do want to allow the top to continue running, but we also at the same time don't want it to be too big and too shady on the bottom of our tree. So we are gonna go ahead and reduce back just a few more of these lower branches, particularly on the inside here over the top of our lower canopy. Let's hit that one there and get those out of the way so we've opened it up a lot more particularly on this side here over our canopy and we are ready to go we're going to put this tree back on the bench and it should start pushing new growth sometime in the next two to three weeks all right folks here we are up tight with our last tree of the day and this is just a tiny little seedling but i wanted to show it to you it's pushed this second flush of growth from these lower branches and you can just see that really beautiful dark orange red color in that early flush color up above here you can see that it's got a nice hunter green color for midsummer i'm going to continue monitoring this tree over the next few growing seasons so that i can confirm that these color patterns are going to stay true every year if so this might be an interesting tree uh, to become a new named cultivar the leaves are fairly small it's got that beautiful dark orange red color for spring growth and then a nice hunter green I'm also going to need to see what this tree does in the fall. It's got a fairly nice slow growth and smallish leaves, very deeply dissected, which is kind of interesting. So I just wanted to show a few more examples of trees that I defoliated about two to three weeks ago. I've kept these in small containers to test out just how small I can get their leaves. So you can see here that after I defoliated, I also pinched back the new growth to stop them all from extending past one node. These have gotten pretty bushy and they're kind of interesting looking. This one over here in this slightly larger pot, you can see how much stronger it is. It's really pushed some large leaves. 
So we're gonna have to continue working on this one to get it reduced. It's also possible that the genetics are just a little bit different between these two specimens. It's always a roll of a dice every time you raise up a seedling a Japanese maple. So we're not gonna give up on this tree yet. I'm gonna continue developing these into nice cascade or semi-cascade in that mame size. And this is a nice root over dragon stone that I created last year. I've got five momiji seedlings on this and I've got the dragon stone wrapped in moss to help preserve the moisture in those roots. You can see we've got a lot of burned leaves here. They've suffered quite a bit in this super high heat. It's been almost 90 degrees for the last couple of days. I water this heavily and try to get this moss as moist as I can. I have kept the soil down below nice and moist because this is such a small composition. We do need to do that defoliation process to continue driving additional ramification and leaf reduction. Once we get the leaves off of these, you'll be able to see the structure that we're starting to build. I think this is gonna shape up pretty well to be a really interesting little composition. We've allowed some of these branches to run even with some structural flaws. So after we defoliate here, we're probably gonna to have to make some big decisions on the structure. When we start seeing those first signs of a second flush in early June, that's our indication that it's time to come in here and do our defoliation. If it's already second flush growth, we can leave those. We don't have to cut them. I really like to make sure that I'm cutting at least 90% of the spring growth off of a tree. Any less than that, it can cause inconsistency in your second flush. It's always an interesting choice whether we want to reduce those structural flaws or we want to use that additional mass to continue dividing that strength across the tree, which can help to reduce the node size. This one's just extremely long, let's cut that back. So sometimes I'll keep some structural flaws that are on the smaller side. I know that they're gonna help me keep the engine of this tree slowed down. And I'm seeing some of these woolly aphids on here. Definitely gonna have to battle those. All right, so now that we have that defoliated, Y'all can see the structure that I have here. Got some little interesting movement in these, and I may continue to pinch them back and selectively prune them. Got some motion coming over to the left side of the composition here. This tree over here curves back that way. I'm not sure if I like that, but it may end up being the back of the tree if I choose this as a front. This is kind of crazy. This one swirls around here. I don't know if I'm gonna keep this lower trunk line or if I'm gonna cut it here and maintain this upper branch over here. I'm just gonna keep both for now and continue developing this tree. This little guy here is coming out from the bottom of a branch. I don't think that's ever gonna be useful in our design, so I'm gonna reduce that there, and same with that little guy there. It's important to keep up with some of the selective pruning when we defoliate our trees to make sure we're not getting too congested in one area. When well, we're working on these trees of a much smaller scale, even a node length that's close to an inch might be too large. I'm gonna go ahead and reduce this one back, just like so. All right, I'm pretty happy with that there. Let's look over here around the back side of this. This upper shoot here has started to run really strong and I do wanna maintain the proportions. This is a beautiful little top that I've got here, but it kinda of lacks interest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a big decision and I'm gonna cut that back really sharply. It's gonna reduce the height of this little tree and create a much more powerful impression there. I haven't given up on this branch here yet, but I do think that I'm gonna to need to apply some wire to create a little more interest here. I've got a little piece of our silicone wrapped aluminum. First, we're gonna anchor the wire onto our main trunk, like so, and then we're gonna come underneath this branch and then over the top. And that's gonna allow us to get a nice anchor point. Continue this movement that direction, maintain that flow, and that right there is gonna look awesome. Thank you for joining me on another episode of ACRP Bonsai. Hop into those comments and let me know what's going on in your Japanese maple garden.